Karen Kingsbury has authored more than 100 books. Where does she get her ideas? Well, she says God puts something on her heart and she writes about it. Her latest work, the movie adaptation of her hit novel, Someone Like You. I fell in love with London Quinn in high school, even though she told me not to. If you're driving, I'm picking music. Someone Like You is the new movie written and produced by New York Times bestselling author Karen Kingsbury. Though many of her books have been made into films or a TV series, Someone Like You is the first project from Karen Kingsbury Productions. This bittersweet love story deals with tough themes that real people cope with and delivers a clear message of hope. She always wanted me to find someone like you. Karen Kingsbury, welcome back to the 700 Club. Well, thank you so much for having me. This is an exciting time. Your books have been adapted into movies before, but this time is different. It's under the Karen Kingsbury Productions banner. What prompted you to start your own production company? Well, you know, God puts a story on my heart like a movie, and I see this beautiful story come to life, and then I write it into a book. Well, I've never quite seen that story on the screen. Been so blessed, of course, to have things, you know, movies made, TV shows made on my books, but it was never going to be exactly what I wanted unless we made it ourselves. Well, this movie is truly a family affair. There are family members involved in the acting, the writing, the directing. So what was that experience like collaborating with relatives on this project? Well, you know, our family has always worked together. We have told our kids since they were little that look around the table because your best friends are the people in your family. And uh, it's been that way for many, many years. So when it came time, like this moment where we said, all right, we have the savings to make our own movie, to pay for it, make the decisions, cast it, pick the locations. It was, of course, the only natural thing to involve the family. And really, as only God could do it, like there are people in our family who are specifically talented to do certain things. And if for such a time as this, you know, this movie is something we think will bring people closer to God and give them a great deal of hope uh, when it opens in theaters on Tuesday. Well, lots of people say when they're discussing movie adaptations, well, the book was better. <laughs> How do you overcome that challenge? And what storytelling advantages do you bring to the table when you're creating films? Well, you know, um, for me, when I watch this movie, you know, to God be the glory, it is truly the perfect movie that he put on my heart. And so I don't, I think it's so close to the book because I had a say in so much of it that I can tell you it's what I see, it's what I wrote. Obviously, you can't include everything you have in the book. But, you know, I feel like uh, uh, to me, seeing this come to life, part of that was being in the editing room and making sure that, okay, no, they can't, and you know, I wouldn't hold hands yet because this other relationship hasn't been dealt with. So I was able to keep this movie true to the story by having my heart and my hands um you know, in every part of the process. So tell us a little bit about the story, Someone Like You. Yeah, Someone Like You is a love story. It's about uh, a grieving architect who has just lost his best friend, a girl that he was in love with. And then he finds out in this grief period that, oh my goodness, she was born IVF and there was an extra embryo. And her parents had given that embryo because it was a life to a fertility specialist who then gave it to another family after it had been in cryopreservation for several years. So this brings him to the reality that, hey, there might be a brother or sister. And because he's missing his friend London so much, he goes to look for her and finds this woman who, this young woman who does not know she was adopted as an embryo. And the journey of kind of helping her through this time of kind of betrayal and loss in her own life and then learning and exploring the sister she never knew um, is and you know it brings them close together and in a way that they didn't expect brings in love as well yeah, those are heavy themes loss betrayal why was it important for you to bring those themes into the big screen you know i think um, a lot of times we can see movies that are so dark or then there's movies that are so light and sometimes neither one are really the reality and as a, as a believer and as a true, you know, lover of Jesus who gives us hope and gives us new life, it's important to show those tragic moments and the losses that we face. You know, in John 16, when Jesus says, in this world, you will have trouble. So 
as an artist, as an author and a storyteller, and now a filmmaker, I need to show those moments on the big screen to allow you to relate to it. And then when you see the redemption and the healing that can come anyway, then you can apply that to your own life and walk out of the theaters this next week with hope. You mentioned in vitro fertilization playing a role in this story. That's a practice that has sparked some heated debates, especially within the pro-life community. How do you respond to those who might feel the movie normalizes this procedure? Well, you know, everyone's fertility and birthing and family experience is going to be different. This technology has been around for decades. Um, you know, to me, I feel like it's it's something that, you know, God needs to inform. Like right now, science has raised questions that only God can answer. Uh, so in this case, this wasn't, this movie isn't about IVF. That was what they had already done. And their daughter's 28, and they'd never told her that she was, you know, formed in a Petri dish. And so, you know, it's not a um, normalization so much of IVF as a really, you know, a, a reality check that that is a very common practice. And what do we do with these leftover embryos that are four cell babies? You know, it, it, it kind of lays at the in the background of the story, but the idea of embryo adoption, that's kind of where my heart is. Okay, now that you've done IVF, there are more than 500,000 embryos on ice today waiting for adoption. Our family has a One Chance Foundation where we give grants to people who are adopting internationally, domestically, and now also uh, embryo adoption. How is that a, a process that is available to most people? Is there, what's the expense involved in that? It's much less expensive than any other form of adoption. Uh, obviously there are children who need to be adopted that are already, you know, currently breathing and living out in the world, uh, but not everybody has that story. So each person is called to their own part of taking care of orphans, so to speak. And the process is really relatively simple and it's relatively inexpensive. Um, you know, it's really for that for that couple that either wants to rescue an embryo and they are not equipped to be able to adopt a child who's older or maybe who has higher need levels. Um, or it might be for the family that where the mom really wants to experience birth. And this is the only way that they can get pregnant. And many people see it as like the starfish on the beach. There are a lot of embryos ready to be adopted. But, you know, it will matter to that one. There's a beautiful picture of a family on my website where they had a daughter, they had a son. They just wanted to rescue one embryo, and now they have three children. Wow, well, it's shaping up to be a very busy season for Karen Kingsbury adaptations with the Baxters now available on Amazon Prime. And that's that's kind of a new opportunity. Can you share about that? Yeah, so the Baxters are, you know, I've written more than 20 books about this family and started doing that many, many years ago. My dad always saw it as something that Roma Downey would want to be a part of. And of course, back then I didn't have any connection with her. Um, today, I hope he has a window from heaven because today it is live across the world on Amazon Prime. It's uh, The Baxters has been on a shelf for five years, but for such a time as this, God has released it. We've asked for that. We've been praying about that. And now everyone can take part in what we kind of are calling a hope opera in the sense that it involves a doctor and his wife and their five young adult kids and how they make their way through trials, tragedies, and triumphs and uh, keep turning their faces back to God. Well, I think that seems to be an anchor in all of your work, Karen Hope. And that's why so many people enjoy all of your work. Want to encourage people. Karen's new movie, Someone Like You, opens nationwide on April the 2nd. Also, The Baxters is streaming now on Amazon Prime. And you can pick up a copy of any of her books in stores nationwide. So nice to have you with us, Karen Kingsbury. Thank you. Thank you so much. Appreciate it.